You may remember the movie A Beautiful Mind, starring Russell Crowe as John Nash, the Nobel Prize winning economist and mathematician. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia in the 1950s and struggled with the illness for most of his adult life. Nevertheless, he was able to bring great insight into the field of economics and was a mathematical genius. You may also be familiar with Sid Barrett, who was the original lead singer of the rock group Pink Floyd. Now, he too suffered from schizophrenia, but unfortunately the illness forced him out of the band in 1968, and he did continue to write music as a solo artist. There's also the life story of a German judge, Daniel Schrieber, who wrote about his experiences with schizophrenia in his now famous Memoirs of My Nervous Illness. So, what is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a mental disorder that affects a person's cognition, their affect, and behavior. It's a chronic condition characterized by symptoms such as uh, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, abnormal behavior, all of which hamper day-to-day -day functioning. Symptoms of schizophrenia typically develop in the late teenage years or early adulthood, and the condition is often diagnosed in people in their late 20s or 30s. People with schizophrenia may have difficulty distinguishing between reality and their own thoughts and perceptions, which can be severe and disabling. With proper treatment, however, many people with schizophrenia are able to manage their symptoms and lead fulfilling lives. I've interviewed a number of them for our documentary episodes on schizophrenia. I found them to be wonderful people who are just dealing with an extraordinarily difficult disorder. It's possible that even though you've been to the darkest pits of your life, you can see the light and it can get better, it can improve. So, But it's up to you. Recovery is different between different people. So recovery can be, um, for me, it's different. My recovery for me was getting a job again and getting my license back again, so slowly building my life back again because for a long, long time everything's been taken away, like my driving, my job, everything, even relationships I haven't had for a long, long time. But just rebuilding it slowly. But recovery is different for different people. And some people, recovery can mean just getting up in the morning and having a shower. So I guess the major challenge that my illness presents with is um, the auditory hallucinations, testing reality and not knowing what really is real and what is not real. So I take um, some medication to help me with that and there's a quite a, a deal of processing that happens around what I think and what I feel to try and work through what appears to be reality and what isn't. Um, so that's a bit of a challenge, some mental gymnastics, testing reality. To have a normal life, um, and if I didn't have that, I probably, I don't know where I would be or um, but like you get the hallucinations from time to time, but one of the things I'm a man of faith and that, that has been the, the other rock you could say, like the bigger rock in my life. I just always have faith that whatever you're going through, you will get through it and that you will um, get through to the other side um, of what you're going through. Vulnerability is my symptoms around schizophrenia and what that uh, experience is like for having thoughts and emotions that have basically put me in a vulnerable place. Um, trying to rationalise things myself and coming to my own conclusions conclusions and you know believing in things that are irrational you know that's how the symptoms play out and thinking more of myself than what I am. So what is the prevalence of schizophrenia? 
Well, it affects about 1% of the global population, although the condition is often underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Uh, it's more common in men than in women, and the prevalence of schizophrenia tends to be slightly higher in people of African and Asian descent compared to people of European descent. Now, this may be for a number of different reasons associated with genetics, the environment, cultural factors, healthcare, and so on. And like many health conditions, uh, the prevalence of schizophrenia can vary from country to country and from region to region, even within a country. Now, what is the etiology of schizophrenia? Well, the cause is not fully understood, and it's likely that there are multiple factors that contribute to the development of the condition. Research suggests that schizophrenia may be caused by a combination of genetics and environmental factors. People with a family history of schizophrenia are more likely to develop the condition, and studies have identified specific genetic variations that are associated with an increased risk of the disorder. However, the presence of these genetic variations does not necessarily mean that a person will develop schizophrenia, and the condition can also occur in people with no family history of the disorder whatsoever. Environmental factors that may contribute to the development of schizophrenia include exposure to stress, viruses or other infections, malnutrition and drug use. Some researchers suggest that people who experience significant stress or trauma in early life may be more at risk of developing schizophrenia later in life. It's also thought that abnormal brain development and brain chemistry may play a role in the development of the disorder. And abnormalities in certain chemicals in the brain, such as dopamine and glutamate, have been observed in people with schizophrenia. However, it's not clear whether these abnormalities are a cause or a result of the disorder. Overall, the development of schizophrenia is likely to be influenced by a complex combination of genetics, environment, and brain-based factors. If you'd like to go for a deeper dive into the possible causes of schizophrenia, we've got a few extended interviews with Dr. James Kesby and Dr. Daryl Isles from the Queensland Brain Institute as part of our three and a half hour certificate course on schizophrenia. Click on the information uh, button to go to the course, which is free for premium members. Now, what about the diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia? Well, if we turn to the DSM-5, the criteria for diagnosing schizophrenia include the presence of two or more of the following symptoms. First of all, delusions. These are false beliefs that are not based in reality, such as the belief that others are plotting against the person or that they have special powers or abilities. Uh, secondly, hallucinations. This is seeing, hearing, or experiencing things that are not really there such as hearing voices or seeing visions. Then there's disorganized thinking, difficulty organizing thoughts and expressing ideas clearly, such as speaking in a confused or nonsensical manner. Then there's abnormal behavior that's unusual or inappropriate. And of course, all of these things are highly subjective, but it's taken into consideration together. It's a constellation of these symptoms. And there's negative symptoms like the loss of normal emotional responses or interests, such as a lack of motivation or a lack of emotion. Now a diagnosis uh, must have at least one of these symptoms for a significant portion of time over a period of at least a month. Uh, the symptoms must cause significant impairment in the functioning and uh, must not be better explained by other medical or mental health conditions. And because of the subjective nature of the symptoms, um, diagnosis is always made by a mental health clinician who thoroughly evaluates the patient's symptoms, history, work and personal life, and so is able to correctly judge whether this person actually has schizophrenia or is going through some other sort of breakdown, etc. So what are the treatments for schizophrenia? Well, they typically uh, involve a combination of medication uh, and therapy. The goal of treatment is to manage the symptoms and to improve the individual's overall day-to-day -day functioning. Now, the most common type of medication used to treat schizophrenia is antipsychotic medication, which helps to reduce the severity of delusions, hallucinations, and other psychotic symptoms. The most likely mechanism of therapeutic action is the blocking of dopamine and serotonin acting on the central nervous system. And these drugs can have significant side effects. And so it's very important that patients work closely with their healthcare team to find the right combination of drugs. Now, apart from drug therapy, we have uh, psychotherapy. And this can be a very important part of treatment for the schizophrenic. 
Now, psychotherapy can help individuals with schizophrenia, developing coping strategies, improve social skills, learn how to manage their symptoms. Therapists will typically work with patients to identify and challenge destructive or distressing thoughts, feelings, and to develop coping strategies and manage symptoms and challenges. Now, within the family context, a therapist will work with the family to improve communication, deal with relational tensions, and help them cope with what is really a challenging illness to deal with. Group therapy also can have very positive results. Now, in the documentary that we shot on schizophrenia, it was the group therapy and spontaneously formed groups that brought significant amount of understanding and healing to the people that we spoke with. Um, this support from family and friends and other social support is so important and such, a, such an integral aspect of overall treatment. So the role of uh, vocational trainers, for example, uh, social workers who can help support someone in holding down a job, uh, finding and keeping accommodation, staying with the overall program to treat their illness is so important. And once again, if you're a mental health professional and you'd like to go for a deeper dive into this topic, check out our course based on our documentary episode on schizophrenia. Just click on the information icon at the top of the screen there and it will take you to that course. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in to the Science of Psychotherapy. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell so that we can reach more people and bring you more Science of Psychotherapy. And if you're a mental health professional, check us out at thescienceofpsychotherapy.com.